Quick shots were introduced a few years ago as a series of automatic moves to be used mostly by beginners. But they've been constantly improved and can now be used for videography in different situations to reveal the landscape around an exciting landmark, quickly gather cinematic footage of an unknown location, or for real estate footage. In this video I will show you how to make the most of them with a DJI Flip, Mini 4 Pro, R3S and Mavic 3 Pro. QuickShot works almost identically on the four DJI models. I will show you how to set them up with the Mini 4 Pro. In other models there are only a couple of small differences that I will explain. First of all, for safety reasons, we want to turn on the obstacle avoidance system and set it either to bypass or break, as it is not easy to anticipate the moves made by the aircraft and obstacle might get in the way. The only model not equipped with omnidirectional obstacle sensors is the flip. When using this model, stay clear of surrounding obstacles. On the photo video menu above the shutter, after selecting video, we choose normal on the menu to the left and then in the one to the right we find the icon for quick shots below master shots. In the vertical menu to the left the different models are listed, drone, rocket, circle, helix, boomerang and asteroid. In the Manic 4 Pro there is an interesting extra one that I will explain later on. By tapping on the icon on the lower right we can choose between auto or manual exposure. I suggest using manual, as the light intensity may vary considerably during the different moves, leading to unwanted shift of luminosity when using auto exposure. For best results the middle hours of a sunny day are to be avoided as the different luminosity are severe and the shadows too harsh. Much better to use this feature after sunrise before sunset or with the sun covered by clouds to reduce the shift in luminosity and for softer shadows. The window for exposure and white balance is almost the same as for shooting footage, although the option for frame rate are limited to 30 or 60 frames per second. It would be nice to have a choice for the widely used 24 frames per second. It is possible to select any of the three color profile, normal, HLG and the log, an important feature for professional users to adapt the clips to the specific color scheme of a project. At the top of the window we can set the white balance. Manual mode is the way to go as auto causes serious shift in colors when the luminosity changes. After choosing one of the six quick shot modes, a target must be selected by drawing a box around it. If people or vehicles are on the frame, they will be recognized and the plus sign will be overlaid. We can select them as targets by simply tapping on the plus sign. During the different quick shots, the sticks of the remote controller are not available. If we move them, the quick shot will be aborted. Another way to stop the aircraft during a quick shot is to hit the left button of the remote controller, which is useful when some danger is detected. Let's start with the first mode, Drone. After choosing the target, a small window appears in the lower part of the screen to select the distance of the aircraft from the target during the shot. The value goes from 30 meters to 120. Let's start with a short one of 40 meters. After hitting the green shutter, the aircraft will move away from the subject while ascending. It is a perfect move for the ending of a movie. A low value is preferable when filming people, while a higher one to show the surrounding of a landmark. This is the result when choosing a distance of 100 meters which gives a better idea of the location. At the end of the move the aircraft returns to the initial position, which is useful if we want to try a different shot or the same quick shot with different values. 
It would be helpful to have the option to continue filming during the reverse move. For a choice between a flyaway shot and one that moves closer. It is possible to reverse the move in post-processing if the scene doesn't contain moving elements like cars or people working. With Rocket, the drone ascends and advances while keeping the camera on the target. The move ends on top of the target with the camera pointing down for a bird's eye view. It is essentially the crane move, a classic in videography useful for showing a landmark or in real estate videography, not a simple move to execute manually. We can select the altitude ranging from 30 to 80 meters. Like in Droney, it would be useful to keep recording while the aircraft returns to the starting point, thus obtaining a reverse crane, starting on top of the target and moving backward and downward to reveal the background. Circle is a simplified version of point of interest. The aircraft rotate around the target at a constant distance and height. We can only set the direction using the yellow arrow. I don't find this option very interesting, as with point of interest we can do the same thing with many more options, including the use of the two sticks of the remote controller to get closer or further away from the target and for ascending or descending. Helix is a more dynamic way to reveal the surroundings. The drone orbits around the target while rising in altitude. We can set the direction of flight and the maximum radius from 10 to 120 meters. If we use the high values and start from a relatively high elevation, we could reach the maximum allowed altitude. In this case, we get an error message and the move is aborted. With Boomerang, there is no control over the movement, only the direction of flight can be selected. The drone flies away from the target while rising in altitude and then returns on the other side of the target at the same altitude as it was at the beginning of the movement. It draws a half ellipse around the target. It is an excellent move for real estate to showcase a property, not easy to perform manually. Both Boomerang and Helix are quite slow, and it would be beneficial to have some control over the speed. It is always possible to speed things up in post-production, but moving subjects like cars, people walking, or waves will look unnatural. In asteroid mode, the aircraft performs a move similar to rocket, rising in altitude while maintaining the target in the middle of the frame. At the top of the move, several photos are taken for a full 360 degree panorama. The app processes the images to reproduce a tiny planet view. It is good fun to show it to friends or to post it on social media, but it's not useful in videography. It is better to start at a low altitude to avoid hitting the maximum value, in which case the quick shot is aborted. The mighty Mavic 4 Pro has an extra quick shot, named Rotate. It takes advantage of the rotating gimbal of the flagship model to perform an advancing move with the rotation of the camera. The variables that can be selected are the amount of the rotation in degrees, the length of the advancing move, and the length in seconds of the resulting clip. All quick shot modes work exactly in the same way in vertical format. Most of the quick shot can track a moving target as long as the movement is not too fast. Helix and Boomerang can be quite interesting for following someone walking and for vlogging. Click on this link to watch my video about master shots with the Mini 4 Pro, which works similarly to all other DJI models. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.